Welcome back, everybody. Thought I'd share some quick thoughts on uh, this Eric Lee Smith game called Battle Him. It's the first module, uh, so I imagine that the uh, system will evolve a little bit. <clears throat> but uh, we're looking at, in particular, I, I just played the P Ridge battle. Uh, and, oh gosh, hang on a second. I've heard it's really low class to cough your way through a <clears throat> through a chat. So what I thought I'd do is just let's kind of run through the sort of standard fare of the sort of things that I look for in a game that I like and don't like. If you don't want to watch the whole video, I'll net it out for you that uh, I believe this is a very interesting and playable, uh, fast playing system if you're interested in uh, American Civil War, don't want to get mired in the details, this could be the game for you. I think if you want any sort of leadership aspects or any sort of uh, refinement of uh, the tactical nuances and things of that nature, then this might not be the game for you. You would probably look for something a little more detailed. One of the other systems, perhaps, from some, some of the other vendors that are out there. Uh, so let's talk about the game. It, you're placed in the situation where, as a tactical game with 300-yard hexes and regimental scale <coughs> units, you're put in that sort of uh, overall commander's position, sort of core commander or multi-core commander. Uh, you're really going to be dealing with moving the guys to where they need to be, capturing the VC locations or killing bad guys, depending on what you think a bad guy is, and then uh, sort of going for it from there. And then the, the tactics uh, side of things is where, you know, you're, you know, it, this assumes a lot in this game. It assumes that the leaders know how to lead and that they know how to position and they know how to do facing and they know how to do all those things. So very similar in a way, perhaps to Hexasim's uh, approach to Napoleonics. Although I would say that this game is even simpler than that. But there are some nuances with it, so don't get uh, discouraged if you're looking for something kind of cool, because uh, it's got some good stuff going for it. So, uh, so that whole uh, formation and scale size and turn, what's a turn? It turns an hour, except for overnight, of course. Uh, then it's giving you a pretty tactical feel, but you know, 300 yard hexes are pretty, pretty big hexes uh, uh, for, for this scale of, uh, fighting, I found anyway. Uh, I, I can only, uh, as usual with me, I'm not even sure why I include this anymore with the, uh, the order of battle, but <clears throat> we can safely assume that the homework has been done. There's been so much written about these battles that if you can't find the out which formations were actually here, right? So if, uh, what is, who have we got here? So if, if uh, Grusel was not here, then shame on you for publishing that he was. So we're gonna assume that they were accurate and we're also gonna assume that uh, the force compositions and the, and the strengths of these units are accurate. That said, these strength steps, uh, these strengths are really steps, uh, not uh, sort of combat factors per se. And uh, the movement rates I find are very high nine, even though even though most hexes are going to cost you, uh, you know, a clear a clear hex costs you two movement points, and these light woods cost you three, and heavy woods are uh, four or more depending on the, the unit type. Uh, and a minor road is interesting. Interestingly, one and a half movement points, but a road is one. So. There were some interesting things that uh, sort of occurred with this battle that uh, I probably would have done differently uh, in a replay. That uh, I wouldn't have, um, I wouldn't have moved this formation through this terrain to try and get into the battle and hit this central victory point location. I, I would have done something different, and I, I probably would have uh, not defended as far forward necessarily. Uh, actually, over on this side of the map over here, right? <clears throat> Even though that's a victory location, I, I think I probably would have given that up and then and reinforced this central section of the map. But anyway, that's diversion. You win this game by uh, either, I think, I think this is one of those games where you, you know you've won or you haven't. 
And uh, if you have to get to the point where you start counting step skill and number of demoralizations and number of uh, you know, units, uh, hits uh, allocated and all this sort of stuff, if you have to keep track of all that, which it encourages you to do on your own piece of paper, not with a chart or anything like that, you know, that, that's kind of a grind because you're literally, if, if you were doing an overnight game and you might recover some demoralizations, you're gonna have to keep track of those, I assume, uh, to get, you know, total demoralizations and total hits and steps lost and, and stuff like that. So uh, really, this, you're playing for the battle space, you know, who's, who's controlling the battle space. And so there are these three towns here and, and that's what we're, we're focused on. Uh, Conflict resolution. So interestingly enough, this is kind of the guts of the game. There's a concept around, uh, what is it counting? Concept around uh, approaching fire, where if uh, I move into your hex, you're going to, when the combat chit is pulled, because uh, it's a chit pull game, and if I had to mention that, my apologies, it's a chit pull uh, system. Uh, so each colored band is going to get its own uh, chit, one uh, chit, and then there's a combat phase uh, chit for both sides. So when I advance into a hex here, I'm going to, I, I'm going to place, well, I'll place these uh, approaching fire markers on things, and that's going to help us understand who moved into whose zone of control. And it might be that this gets done and then this guy moves in and so he's going to get one. That's going to look like that, right? Because he's going to have to fire at him and he and he's going to fire at him. Uh, so <clears throat> that's interesting. But what's more interesting is that really it's kind of a bucket of dice approach to combat. I'm going to get a base number to hit based on terrain. So in the in light woods, it's three. In woods, uh, in clear, it's five. And so let's say with a, a, a base of three and I'm approaching you, I'm gonna get some modifiers. If I'm coming across a creek, uh, there's a modifier. If the, I'm, I'm actually approaching you, there's a modifier, which is to the benefit of the mover. So I would need, uh, you always hit on a one and it's a D10 roll. Uh, so I would take a die and roll. And if I get a one, I'll, I'll definitely hit you. If I get a 10, I, I will always miss you. But uh, that will then give me a hit, and we'll put a hit on the unit. After that, uh, then you go to the engagement or the, the, what, the actual combat phase, and then these guys, uh, when they're firing, they're, they only have three steps, so they will shoot, uh, uh, they will roll three times uh, to try and hit. And you'll do the same thing when you do the approaching fire as well. So if I had four steps, I'd, I'd roll four times. Uh, so I'd have my three steps. But if one of those was demoralized, then I'd only have two steps. So now I'm rolling just two dice. Uh, so you can see how the, the, the accumulation of demoralizations and hits, which convert to steps lost, depending on your morale check that you roll, uh, how that will play into the sort of fracturing of the forces and the attrition on the forces over the, the course of the game. So in this particular instance here, this guy's already down to three steps. And the reason why he doesn't have any demoralizations is that he only lost one and he was, uh, he was unsuccessful in his uh, morale roll. And so when you fail your morale roll, you lose a step. Uh, the first the first of the number of hits that you have to take, you lose a step. So that happened there for, for that particular chap. So in this combat, all these guys, if they were adjacent, would get to roll and fire at this dude. Uh, so eight dice, eight, seven dice, and three dice. Now, if it was the other way around, if I was coming into it, uh, if I was sitting here and these guys were attacking me, I would have to split my fire across these units to uh, three, three, and two, uh, for instance. And I'd be rolling three dice, three dice, and two dice as the defender, because this is kind of a masking fire. So it brings to bear some of that, uh, it's where some of the tactical nuance comes in. Can you get enough units around, around this guy, put zones of control around him and get a bonus? Uh, 
which and it will also be a malice for him when he's being when he's shooting. So how do you how do you get uh, get the best bang for your buck uh, against the uh, variety of where are they? The variety of uh, different hits and things that can be impacted. Uh, I think in one of the other videos I showed this to people earlier on, but it's just a nice little chart that outlines all of the, the base to hits and then all the different modifiers that are going to go into this. It can be difficult to get hits on units, uh, particularly if you're in woods and it's approaching fire, you have to get a one to, to get a hit, which you can roll four or five dice and not get a, not get a one. And then you're going to have to go through that exercise of go, uh, you know, suffering uh, the, the full weight of the attack of all these guys. Okay, so that's the guts of the game uh, right there, really. And, and I have skipped some steps. There are other steps. You know, there are multiple rounds of combat that you may have to go through. And at the end of the combat, if uh, one side or the other does not uh, uh, retreat because they fail a morale roll, then, you know, the, the attacker will have to retreat. And that's where sometimes things get a little odd. I went through a turn here where the Union uh, combat chit came out before the Confederate chit. And so they held the victory location. They were compelled to attack because the Confederates had closed in in a you know, sort of last ditch effort. We were down the last couple of turns here to try and clear Lee's town here or Lee town and take the town. But they didn't get to do the attack. They were the guys that were moving in. So these guys were the attacker. So they had to fight. They had to split their fire against all these guys. And these chaps uh, uh, were then able to uh, uh, move, uh, force this. Uh, there were no losses. Uh, well, there were losses. There were demoralizations, but no retreats. So they put they put a little bit of hurt on this uh, this unit that was in here. I forget where it was now. One of these guys here. He took three de demoralizations. He was here. He had to retreat two, uh, and ended up uh, failing his morale roll because he rolled low, not high, and had to retreat. So here's a unit who's ensconced in the town, trying to hold that four victory points, and he is forced to retreat even though he was defending. I just found that a little odd and that was a little quirky. I double checked online um, on Board Game Geek and uh, asked some questions. That seems to be how things work. So, all right, we're, this is getting a little long in the tooth, so let's keep going. So that's combat resolution and conflict and all the rest of it. Uh, so no CRTs, right? Uh, logistics, none. Uh, historical narrative, uh, you know, yes, it's here. Uh, as I mentioned, there are no command and control rules, so units can really kind of float all over the place if you want them to. There's no benefit for formation cohesion or anything like that. And there are absolutely no leaders in the game and there are also no supply rules in the game. So I think it, you know, you, you're probably going to start in a historical situation and the victory conditions will probably drive you to behave in a certain way. But other than that, it's pretty much a free-for-all uh, based on what I'm seeing after this initial play. Replayability is very high because you have this chip pull mechanic, which frankly I enjoy very much. And it's going to give you an endless uh, opportunity to you know, rehash the what-ifs here. Ab absolutely. So very nice. Playtime plays super fast. Uh, I, you know, because I was a little uh, wary on a couple of different things with the rules uh, around some of the, these combat uh, aspects and, and some of the modifiers, I was just, just want to make sure I was reading them correctly. Uh, it took me a little bit longer, but the first four turns I probably cranked out in an hour. Uh, really not a lot of action actually in the first three turns because you are literally closing uh, to meet each other. Uh, forces start down here and the others up here. Now, with Gettysburg, bigger map, more units, I'm sure that's going to take a lot longer time to play. But this game system is probably very well suited to smaller battles. Uh, although I could see well, maybe then with, you know, 10, 20 chits, it's going to be a bit of a drag uh, as to who goes when. Uh, but uh, given the, the low complexity of the rules, 
you will probably find that uh, a, a larger battle like Gettysburg will play very quickly. So there's, there's that for you. Now, I think uh, components, I like the map. I saw some people complaining about the map. I think it's got quite a nice theme to it. It's got some little historical bits that's under the box over here that you can't see right now, but you can perhaps look at the pictures on the blog uh, to see what they look like. And the counters are functional and well, uh, well sized, larger hexes, clear reading numbers, no, none of these historical fonts that make it impossible to read. Uh, the charts, I think, could have been done better, and uh, the rules are pretty well laid out, although I did find myself bouncing around a little bit, even though it is a very short rule book. I think it clocks in at 12 pages or something like that. Uh, no, I was wrong, 14. Uh, but there, there you go. Anyway, so uh, nice layout, full color, nice paper, and pretty easy and straightforward. Uh, so I would say that they're pretty interesting. It, it, it's a little soft on the action side of things. I, you know, you get into these engagements and I, I don't know if it was thrilling, <laughs> would not be a word I would use to describe this game, but it is very interesting. Uh, and, and obviously this is all built on the back of uh, the old uh, Across Five Aprils, I think it's called, from Eric Lee Smith. So it's sort of a, a reimagining of that game into a game system. There are some, the final thing I'll say about the, about the game, uh, there's some counters missing. I think there should have been some, uh, I forget what, they, what I was missing, but I was looking for it. It says in here that uh, it's either engaged or engaging or something like that, that you needed to put a marker down. And there are, there are no markers that I could find that represented the specific that I was looking for. But other than that, it's fine. Uh, probably not enough. Uh, where, what was it? No, that was it actually. That was probably all it was. Uh, so I think that is super. I just want to give you a quick update and a look at that. You can see there are a substantial number of counters. Let's have a quick look here. You know, that's a tray full, right? Because uh, it's P Ridge and Gettysburg. Two interesting battles to uh, to mess about with. One, a very small scale meeting engagement in Gettysburg, obviously a larger scale meeting engagement. All right, there you go. Uh, battle him, Gettysburg, P Ridge, Compass Games. Pretty good, I liked it.